so in summary, um, the stuff we've talked about, if we have, uh, a, we apply a horizontal stretch factor like this, then normally the period is at pi. Can anybody figure out what the period is going to become when I apply that horizontal stretch factor? You guys had your Wheaties this morning, eh? You're on fire. You guys know, you remember that commercial? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, I guess I'm a little older than you. <laughs> there used to be this thing where Michael Jordan was playing basketball and, and there was a little kid and, and the kid couldn't keep up to him and he used to say, better eat your Wheaties, and it was a little Wheaties commercial. So anyways, um, so Alan, you want to tell us how you got, uh, or what you think that would be? That would be. Yeah, so the horizontal stretch factor in this case would be one over B. So if I multiply that on to the normal period, I would end up with pi over b. That's where it's changed. So there's goal number one. We can find the period without having to do the graph. Goal number two is we need to be able to locate asymptotes. So let's talk about that. Asymptotes of the tangent function. We just mentioned this. It's where cos x equals to zero. Because if I divide it by zero, tangent can be written as sine over cosine. So cosine must have been zero. While we're on that note, let's fill in this one. Asymptote of the cotangent function are where what? Yeah, sine x equals to 0. OK, so then it becomes, instead of asking the question like, look on the graph for the asymptotes, we can say solve the equation cos x equals 0, or sine x equals 0. OK, so what we may have to do, though, if we were to use transformations, if we had cosine, uh, sorry, not cosine, if we had um, tangent of b, I'll get at one of these tries. Just give me one more try there. Tangent of bx, there we go. Um, we'd be talking about cosine of bx equals to 0. And cotangent of bx, we'd be saying sine of bx equals to 0. So I'm going to show you some strategies now to figure out how it is that you do that transformation. How do you find the asymptotes if somebody squished them on you? Okay, so first one we'll do together. Second one I'm going to have you try. Okay, so first of all, what would the period be for graph number one? Tangent of one-half x. Uh, east side, people. Let's see here. Dylan, I know you know this one. How did you get 2 pi so easily? Yeah, pi divided by a half. So that's going to be 2 pi. Again, the other way you can think of it, horizontal stretch factor here is 2. 2 times the normal period of pi gives me 2 pi. Okay, so now we need to find some asymptotes. So here's the way I like to do this. I go normally, and now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the fact that there's a 1 half in there. I'm going to say, normally, I'd be looking for cos x equal to 0. Where would that happen? Can anybody give me one value where cos x equals 0? Sure, Jackie. Yeah, that's one place. Give me another one. Somebody else. Andy. Sorry? 3 pi over 2. Can we go one more? One more. One more, one more. Sure, Alice. Sure, 5 pi over 2 as well. Okay. So cos x equals to 0, most of you would probably at this point be thinking of using your unit circle. Here's where x equals to 0, right there, right there. So if you keep spinning around the unit circle, every time you hit one of those dots, you'll hit a 0 for cosine, like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. Okay. The difference this time, though, is we've changed it slightly. It now has a... Um, it now has a 1 half in it. Okay. So instead of finding them where I normally would, can anybody tell me where I might find, say, 1 half pi? Where would that show up now? At pi, that's right. Because the horizontal stretch factor is 2, so all these coordinates get multiplied by 2. So that means now I'm going to be at pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and on and on. So now the trick is, can we figure out the pattern? Okay, so I'm going to just give you a minute to think about that. What is the pattern for the general equation?
Okay, so if I'm looking at this pattern, I can see one of the places I could pick as a starting spot is pi. And every time I move along, that's 2 pi. That's 2 pi. So one way I could write this pattern down is I could say pi plus 2 pi n. And um, I'm running out of space here, so I'll have to put, um, I'll have to cheat. Don't do it like that on your uh, provincial exam. That's the nerdy calculus way of doing it. But uh, it says where n is an integer. I just run out of room, so I'm going to have to shortcut it. OK, so that's the way I could find this pattern. Starts at pi, and every 2 pi n, I get another asymptote. OK, so I'd like you to try the second one all by yourself, a cotangent of 4x. See what you can come up with for period, asymptotes, and then um, the general equation. OK, so one way we could approach this problem, um, my horizontal stretch factor here is a quarter. So that means the period is going to be pi over 4. Um, normally, normally I'd be looking at the sine of x to be equal to 0. And I would find that at places like 0, pi, um, 2 pi, 3 pi, and keep going. Now, um, the horizontal stretch factor of a quarter is going to move them. It's going to be 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Okay. And obviously, you don't need to worry about reducing your fractions here, because we're only doing this as rough work to find the general equation. Okay. In fact, it's easier to find the general equation if you have common denominators, because it's easier to see how far along you moved each time. So for example, to get from 0 to pi over 4, I had to move by pi over 4. Okay. Then the next time, I also moved by pi over 4. Pi over 4. So, um, oops, you can log me off, that's fine. Um, so what I could rewrite this as is I could say, here's the first one, which is a 0, but it's not really significant to me, right? I, I don't need to write it down. Then it changes by adding um, pi over 4n where n is an integer. Okay, so that would be the general, uh, the general equation for the asymptotes. And again, we'll be practicing asymptotes or general equations quite a bit, so you will have a lot of time here to practice it before there's a quiz or anything else that shows up for it. Okay. So this time, um, I will show you a nice picture because I know sometimes my artistic skills aren't the greatest. But um, we could do this if we forgot. Let me just remind you how we could do this um, if you all of a sudden blanked out. Okay. Um, this is a reciprocal transformation. If we want to go from cosecant to the sine, we're talking about the reciprocal graph. So can anybody give me some handy tips for graphing the reciprocal? Kathy, how about you? Can you give me one real handy tip? How about this one? Totally forgot? <laughs> right, okay, so if it equals zero, which is also known as an x-intercept, right? If it touches the x-axis, that's where we'll find an asymptote on the uh, reciprocal graph. So here's where I'd find some reciprocal uh, asymptotes. Okay. Can anybody else think of another thing that might have been handy? Sure, go for it. Right, big reciprocal, or sorry, big value, small reciprocal, small value, big reciprocal. Um, the other thing were the invariant points. So there's one, negative one. So those are the invariant points. This is a very small positive over here, so that means it's going to be a huge positive. And small positive becomes a huge positive again. So if I was to keep applying my reciprocal transformation, this is what I'd get. So again, um, we're just looking at the graph in red. The graph in red is cosecant. Can you see what the period of that graph is? Here, I'll tell you what, just in case it's a little cluttered, 
I will. Uh, I will change this. Okay. So there's a similar picture. What do you think? What do you think the period of that graph would amount to? Tell us. Pi. So that's a good uh, a good idea, um, because pi would be the width of one of these u's. Only problem with pi is that's only half of it, because it goes from a u to like a, an upside down u. Then it goes u upside down u. So the pattern actually repeats. You want to adjust your original answer? It's two pi. Yeah, it actually repeats every two pi. Okay, so this is one period. If I go x equals negative 2 pi and x equals 0. So those two black lines there, I know they're harder to see, but those two lines mark one of the periods of the graph. So again, um, I'll show you here. Maybe I'll put purple as the border. Here's one period of the graph would look like this, okay, the purple section. And it, that's what's repeated. So the good news is this is a graph that's connected to sine. Its period has the same period as the sine graph. So that's the good news, right? We only have to, it's not different just because we took the reciprocal. The period's still 2 pi. Okay. Um, asymptotes, well, we can see in the picture here, we've got a bunch like 0, negative pi, pi, negative 2 pi, 2 pi, and it would keep going. Does anyone think they can do the, uh, the general equation for this one? Is it getting less scary? Let's see here. East side. East side's quiet today, so let's pick on the east side. Um, Jonathan, can you do this one? Yeah, just pi n. Sorry, I thought you said pi n. Okay, because each time I moved over, um, well, let's do the positive side. So looking at this one, that's pi, pi again, and the next one, 3 pi, would be pi as well. So where n is an integer. Okay, so I'm going to let you come up with the uh, secant graph and the same bits of information.